major lung resections in the presence of antiplatelet therapy. It's a problem and uh, for us, for the surgeons. Thank you. We, we switched the two talks. Uh, can, can you go to the talk of... Uh, right. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for the invitation. I was asked to give a talk, um, uh, major lung resection or thoracic surgery in the presence of antiplatelet therapy. As you know, the constellation of patients requiring, uh, for instance, lung resection for lung cancer, um, having coronary artery disease and undergoing, for instance, coronary artery stenting is not that in infrequent and this is a, a vexing clinical problem. In fact, this is the problem if you do this type of surgery in the presence uh, of antiplatelet therapy, especially in patients uh, with dual antiplatelet therapy uh, for after uh, recent coronary artery stenting. Then you have the problem as surgeon, as Odysseus says you had, uh, meaning sailing between Scylla and Charybdis. As you know, these are two monsters. Scylla is the dragon on the right side, and the Charybdis is the world on the left side, and then you can choose uh, between uh, the two, the two evils. Now, the problem is uh, for us, Scariptis is thrombosis, myocardial infarction, after withdrawal of antiplatelet therapy of instant thrombosis and, uh, and, and um, uh, an infarction in the perioperative setting. And on the other hand, the risk of hemorrhage if you operate these patients under uh, this treatment um, or if you delay, have to delay cancer surgery, for instance, uh, if you cannot, if you fear bleeding and cannot uh, withdraw this uh, treatment. However, we have to realize that the published data for non-cardiac thoracic surgery, especially thoracic surgery, is relatively scarce. So we all know that antiplatelet therapy can reduce, uh, reduce the risk of serious vascular events in high-risk patients in a significant way. 30% uh, of uh, non-fatal myocardial infarction, stroke, and vascular mortality. It means that Antiplate therapy is frequently prescribed in, for a variety of condition, especially in patients undergoing the thoracic surgery. It is prescribed for primary prevention, coronary artery disease, peripheral artery disease, cerebral vascular disease, uh, fibrillation, and also for prevention of venous thromboembolism. The action of antiplatelet agents, as you all know, especially for aspirin and clopidogrel plavix, which is mainly used uh, actually in this setting, as, at least as we see as thoracic surgeons, uh, are irreversible uh, inhibitors. And it's important to realize that the termination of drug activity of these irreversible inhibitors relies on platelet renewal, which is about 10% per day. Now, first uh, looking for the data actually available for non-cardiac surgery, under antiplatelet therapy, especially aspirin. There's uh, quite a large trial recently been published in uh, 2014, a randomized controlled trial of 10,000 patients uh, um, with patients at risk for vascular complications having non-cardiac surgery, randomized uh, operation with and without aspirin. It's important to realize that exclusion criteria, especially for the rest of the talk, were bare metal stents less than three weeks before surgery and drug eluting stents deployed less than 12 months before surgery. So this is the concept, the administration straight on no aspirin before surgery, continuation straight on aspirin before surgery, stop three days before, and then the randomization is two milligram aspirin versus placebo just before surgery, and then again the administration straight on continuation medications, 100, day, 100 milligram per day for 30 days, and continuum for seven days, and then aspirin as before. The results, the two collectives were well uh, balanced with respect to various uh, risk factors. Please realize that the uh, co coronary artery interventions were quite scarce, bypass grafting, um, percutaneous intervention, stents, etc. Primary outcome was no difference between aspirin and placebo with respect to death or non-fatal myocardial infarction, 7% in both groups. Secondary outpoints as well, death from any cause, myocardial infarction, pulmonary embolism, deep venous thrombosis, arterial thrombosis, 
much the same in both group patients with and without aspirin during operation. However, major bleeding was significantly higher in the aspirin group. Here the primary outcome uh, strictly is the same for both group aspirin and uh, with placebo during surgery. Here the bleeding risk which maintained for about seven days after surgery in the aspirin group uh, respect, with respect to the placebo and controls. Supergroup analysis of this uh, large study revealed that there was no difference between the different uh, um, operation categories, meaning thoracic surgery was about 400 aspirin groups and 400 in the placebo group, and the primary outcome was similar in indication and con continuation striatum. The conclusion of this study was that the administration of aspirin before non-cardiac surgery and during the early post-operative period had no significant effect on the rate of death or non-fatal fatal myocardial infarction, but increased the risk of major bleeding, and this applies to patients who were not already on aspirin as well as those who were on the long-term aspirin regimen. But please remember that none of these patients had recently deployed stents. Here, and more specifically, a study, a recent study coming from Korea, looking um, for lung resection and uh, mediastinal lymph node dissection, lobectomy, performed by VATS, uh, a retrospective study in 164 patients. Uh, they compared two con uh, groups, those with preoperatively interrupted uh, antiplatelet therapy uh, versus those who had continuous antiplatelet uh, agents, uh, especially, of course, in patients at risk for uh, coronary artery disease and stent thrombosis. Here you can see the comparison of the both group, well balanced for age, uh, sex, smoke, and um, aspirin. However, aspirin clopidoxel was more likely to be uh, continuant in the continuant group, uh, and that there were more frequently uh, CAD, PCI um, in the in the continuant group and. Primary high prevention was more frequent in the interrupted group, which is quite logic somehow. Here the uh, results, there was no difference between continued and interruption to APA uh, for VATS lobectomy, mesinal lymph node dissection for conversion thoracotomy, for instance, for bleeding or other problems, intraoperative transfusion, bleeding, 30-day mortality, 30-day morbidity, transfusion rate, and reoperation rate for bleeding. Strictly no difference. However, if they look then f um, for in their collective of lobectomies performed by VATS combined to mediastinal lymph node dissection, uh, just looking at the group who had a dual antiplatelet therapy versus monotherapy, they had a significant difference in blood loss, postoperative transfusion, and postoperative bleeding requiring reoperation or reintervention in the dual antiplatelet. Uh, group compared to the monotherapy group. So they conclude in this study that the antiplatelet agent can be safely administered in patients at risk of cardiac events undergoing thoracoscopic lobectomy and mediastinal lymph node dissection for lung cancer. However, patients receiving both clopidogrel and aspirin have increased risk of postoperative bleeding and transfusion requirement for this type of surgery. Now, the problem is especially um, important and um, crucial if you do this type of surgery in the presence of coronary artery disease, especially in patients who under, underwent uh, um, a stenting, coronary artery, artery stenting. And here I feel the problem, uh, you have two swords of Damocles then uh, if, as, as surgeon in situations, because if you uh, think over to withdrawal of antiplatelet therapy, then you might have an increased risk of perioperative myocardial infarction or other cardiac events. And if you um, keep dual antiplatelet therapy, which is usually the case, as we have heard, uh, after stent deployment, for instance, then, as we have seen before, you have to increase risk of perioperative bleeding. So the problem is, if you do surgery in the presence of coronary artery, disease, it has been well recognized that myocardial infarction is a common vascular complication, the most common vascular complication of the surgery in patients at risk for coronary artery disease with a mortality which is quite high in the situations of 15 to 25 percent. 
The problem is that surgery leads to platelet activation, hypercoagulability, and the coronary artery vessel wall shear stress with an increased risk of coronary artery uh, thrombosis and myocardial infarction. And in fact, it has also been shown that in these situations, preoperative antiplatelet therapy inhibits platelet aggregation and may prevent these disastrous problems during surgery uh, with respect to coronary artery disease. The problem is uh, especially uh, pronounced if you have then this type of surgery performed in the presence of coronary artery stenting, because surgery creates a prothrombotic milieu per se, and then exposes per se thrombogenic material to this post-thrombotic milieu in the post-operative phase, with the risk of instant thrombosis, especially of course of non reindertalized stents, uh, and of course in the absence of antiplatelet agents, with the risk of myocardial infarction at 35%, and a very high mortality in this special situation of perioperative instant thrombosis estimated at 20 to 40 percent, very high. Here you can see an interesting um, relation between the mortality risk of non-cardiac surgery in patients with coronary artery stents and perioperative interruption of dual antiplatelet therapy with respect to the time since stenting. And you can see blue, the bare metal stents, or comparison bypass surgery, coronary bypass surgery, a very high risk of mortality at the beginning, but still quite high at three months, but less high at three months. And if you look for drug eluting stents, this risk of perioperative instant thrombosis and mortality remains up to 12 months and probably longer, because as you all know, the drug eluting stent is in fact a, a mean to destroy um, the development of in, um, intimal hyperplasia, but on the price that you will not have a reaction of reindertalization in this situation, at least in the, in, in the old uh, drug related gentis generation. So the actual recommendation guidelines is that you, if you perform surgery in the presence of coronary stents, keep lifelong aspirin administration and keep uninterrupted dual antiplatelet therapy, typically uh, plavix and aspirin until stent reindertalization. And we do not really know in drug eluted stent when this will appear. So at least six weeks for uh, bare metal stents, this uh, uh, dual antiplatelet therapy, and at least 12 months, at least 12 months for drug eluted stents in case of surgery. Here, an interesting study performed uh, in the States looking for thoracic surgery in patients with clop under clopidogrel for coronary artery disease. Uh, um, surgery performed between 2009 and 10, and they compared this with uh, matched pairs patients with undergoing thoracic surgery without clopidogrel, looking for the major ca uh, cardiac events, mortality, morbidity, and they may est estimate blood loss. They were, because, since they were matched pairs, quite comparable for the different risk factors. Um, all patients had, as we, per definition, coronary artery disease in this collective, and uh, stents, 64% in the clopidogrel group and um, 33 in the control group, aspirin, 23 and 39 patients in these situations. Most of the stents were drug eluting stents. Here you can see the results. <clears throat> they looked three different groups, clopidogrel and aspirin, clopidogrel alone, and the control group, and you can see for all three different groups there was no significant difference between reoperation for bleeding, postoperative morbidity, postoperative major, major adverse cardiac events, and mortality. However, they had reoperation for bleeding in patients who had redo surgery under dual antiplatelet therapy. Now, they looked specifically um, in, in the group of patients uh, who had lobectomy uh, and coronary artery stents, because the whole collective is thoracic surgery in general, and here they looked more specifically in lobectomy, which considers, is considered as a more invasive and major surgical procedure. And here they can see in patients with coronary stents, uh, if you have clopidogrel, there was no patient who did the myocardial infarction, the peripostoperative period, but quite a high proportion of patients did perioperative peri myocardial infarction 
if they were not protected by Plavix. And the mortality in this group doing perioperative infarction was 40%. Almost 50% of the patients died uh, who did an instant thrombosis after lobectomy in this situation. So they concluded uh, that pulmonary resection can be performed safely in patients who are receiving both clopidogrel and aspirin, except for reduced thoracotomy, there is a risk of clinically significant bleeding. And they also observed in their small collective a significant reduction of perioperative myocardial infarction if clopidogrel is maintained in patients with coronary artery stenting during lobectomy. Um, we looked uh, uh, another way around uh, um, it, with uh, the French uh, surgeons, uh, Club Dorax, uh, we did a study where we looked uh, in patients with lung resection with the, within three months after uh, coronary stenting of perioperative instant thrombosis and bleeding. So we looked all patients undergoing lobectomy or pneumonectomy for thoracotomy for lung cancer who required this type of surgery within three months of coronary stenting because they could not wait longer in order to uh, um, avoid uh, progression of the underlying tumor disease. And in this collective of 33 patients, we looked for morbidity, mortality, instant thrombosis, and hemorrhage. They were all patients had stents. Most of them, all of them bare metal stents. All had clopidogrel and aspirin before, after stenting at, for at least six weeks, according a little bit longer, even as recommended by the guidelines, as you have heard, all patients had clopidogrel stopped before surgery because these patients underwent lobectomy and pneumonectomy in the standard way. It's quite an old study by thoracotomy. Um, 66 patients had perioperative heparin and aspirin uh, in addition to Plavix, which has been stopped, and postoperative heparin, 34%. The 30-day mortality was 9%. Two patients died from RDS, non-related to the anticoagulation and stent procedure. And one patient, however, died for instant thrombosis. 30-day um, morbidity was 25%. Bleeding complications occurred in three patients, 9%, with hemothorax in two and retropathic hematoma in one. And instant thrombosis was observed in three patients, despite uh, recommendation of the guidelines, two non-fatal and one uh, fatal. Here, this uh, fatal outcome in one of these patients with a coronary stenosis, as you uh, can observe, the LAD, two, two stenosis, the LAD, and one in the diagonal branch. The LAD was, has been stented. This was not stented. Treated six weeks with dual antiplatelet therapy. We did a lobectomy, and the patients developed perioperative um, myocardial infarction, despite op the operation has been performed under heparin and aspirin, instant thrombosis, and then uh, failed uh, revascularization with a, fa a fatal myocardial infarction. Please uh, uh, recognize that the very uh, high, um, uh, very um, pronounced stenosis in the diagonal branch did not thrombose during all this exercise. Only the stent has thrombosed because this is the typical problem of the exposure of thrombo thrombogenic material in this prothrombotic perioperative milieu. The study concluded that major lung rejection performed after coronary artery stenting may be complicated by perioperative instant thrombosis, even if the recommendations and guidelines are followed. We do actually at the SHUV the following algorithm together with our, has been elaborated by our anesthetist, the patient on monotherapy, either aspirin or clopidogrel, uh, undergoing primary prevention. Then we stop this five days before surgery and do elective surgery. For secondary prevention, for all surgery, we uh, do surgery under continuous th treatment of monotherapy. It's a monotherapy. Patients under dual antiplate therapy, uh, aspirin and clopidogrel in the standard uh, situations. If there's a low cardiac situation, we do all surgery and stop before surgery clopidogrel and maintain aspirin. And if there's a high risk cardiac situations, for instance, less than six weeks of uh, percutaneous uh, coronary intervention, bare metal stents, less than three months, 
myocardial infarction or uh, uh, ICS, uh, less than 12 months drug eluted stents, and more than 12 months high risk stents, multiple stents, etc. Then, in these situations, if it is a real pure elective surgery, we delay surgery. If it's vital or urgent surgery or cancer surgery, as we have seen, then we do um, surgery under continuous treatment, um, dual antiplatelet therapy. And however, if we uh, consider that the bleeding risk is excessive and very dangerous, uh, for instance, um, if we have the uh, compression of, of, of vital structures in case of hematoma, then we stop clopidogrel and substitute, we maintain aspirin, and we restart clopidogrel uh, 24 hours uh, after that. These are our results obtained with this algorithm, major lung resection at, and antiplatelet therapy at the SHUV. Um, about uh, for 400 uh, patients, uh, 500 patients, uh, either with three reaps with a Klexan in normal patients without any problem, aspirin and Klexan, and then aspirin clopidogrel mainly for patients with coronary artery stenting, which requires then operation in, in due time. 30 day mortality, morbidity, myocardial infarction, hemothorax requiring operation. Here the intervention performed, and here the results. As you can see, if these patients undergoing lobectomy um, and uh, mediastinal lymph node dissection, most of these patients, um, there is no difference between uh, Clexan, low molecular weight heparin, as thrombosis prophylaxis, combined with aspirin with a very low 30-day mortality um, and myocard myocardial infarction rate or hemothorax. However, if we have to combine aspirin clopidogrel, mainly in patients who had recent uh, uh, coronary artery stenting, that's the main indication for maintaining this treatment, then we have a 30-day mortality of 6%, 30-day morbidity of 18%, myocardial infarction rate of 18%, and hemothorax of 6%, requiring reoperation. So in conclusion, mm -hmm. as we have seen at the beginning, the problem of antiplatelet therapy uh, versus instant thrombosis, uh, uh, we have to, to deal with this problem. Uh, this is in the, um, in the book of Homer. He preferred Skilla because uh, he, he was um, ready to sacrifice some of this, uh, uh, as you can see, of his sailors to the monster. But because he thought that it's better to sacrifice some of these <laughs> sailors in the monster, but to preserve the ship and the rest of the crew. And for us, it's a little bit the same thing. Skilla for us is the hemorrhage. Uh, Scariptis is the instant thrombosis. We as surgeons also think that it's probably wise to keep, especially patients with coronary artery, recent coronary artery stenting, this aggregation therapy as the patients need, prescribed from their cardiology and uh, um, um, assume a little bit a higher risk of hemorrhage, which we can probably more easy control than instant thrombosis with a very high peri- and postoperative mortality. Thank you for your attention.